Ladies and gentlemen, Muslim Rabadi is going to be forced back to the drawing board. From all indications, Western Kenya is still under the grip of Raila Amolo Odinga. Today there was some women event in Kakamega, Masinde Mlero University. And as usual, Muslim Davadi saw an opportunity. And he attended this event. And Muslim Davadi was accompanied by Malava member of parliament, who is one of his close allies. This is what Muslim Davadi posted on his Facebook page before I show you the shock of his life. This is what he posted. Uh, Today I joined Western Region Women at their inaugural conference at Masinde Muliro University of Science and Technology, Kakamega County. The event was a major stride in uh, the liberation on women empowerment in our society. Let me just go, because he posted it was a long thing. Let me just go to the conclusion. I urge Western Kenya leaders to borrow from the human development paradigm that incorporates quality, sustainability, productivity, empowerment, cooperation, and security as a way forward in women empowerment. As a region, we must build up human capacity by investing in people and using their capacity fully for growth and employment. I'm just reading for you that so that you can understand that this event actually took place. As usual, they were given opportunity to speak. And when Ijendi, the Malava member of parliament, was given the chance to speak, he started talking ill against Raila Amolo Odinga. And at that point, hell broke loose. Mukitaka, yule serikali mmesema iwapatie maendeleo ili ya kwanza sisi watu wa western tutoe sauti moja sauti hiyo moja ya kisiasa ukipata politics political kingdom mambo mengine yote inafuata kama wakati huu pura tulimaliza Yule ambaye amechukua nafasi ya president sio mwingine ila Ruto. Yule ambaye naibu wake sio mwingine ila Rigadi. Unapoangalia maana umeketi. Prime capital sector sio mwingine ni Musa Sari. Uangalia wapi? Uangalia wapi fika wetu? Nikijana na hiki peta wetangula. Wewe ningependa kuambia usikubali wewe mama vile hali ilivyo wakati huu Kenya hii usikubali mtu kuambia mambo mengine wakati huu tutakufanya kufanya ka kazi Wewe watu wa Rift Valley walipoona wakati huo Mtu ambaye alikuwa anakaribia serikali na kuinyakua ni William Ruto. Wote waliamua wakasimama nyuma ya Ruto. Ya Ruto. Ningependa kuambia Centro Kenya. Centro Kenya.
Salam Ravadi was left there speechless. Because in that event, it was purely a women affairs event. Azimio never mobilized their team there. None of Azimio leaders were present at that event. Muslim Ravadi today in this country is the prime cabinet secretary of the Republic of Kenya. And he witnessed this thing live. He was shocked. So the question is, why do you think the women there decided to shout down Ijendi in front of uh, Muslim Ravadi for trying to attack Raila Amol Odinga? Number one, I think it has to do with Raila Odinga's current rallies. The truth of the matter is that these rallies which Raila Odinga began a few weeks ago are gaining traction amongst his supporters. Those who support Raila Odinga fully are in support of these rallies. I know those who are not with Raila Odinga don't really support the rallies, but if you ask anybody, if you talk to anybody who is supportive of Raila Odinga, who voted for him, they will tell you that they believe that these rallies are going to culminate into Raila Odinga getting justice, winning back his seat, reclaiming the presidency. So they are supportive of this. I know Raila Odinga is charging the country. Then there, another man, Member of Parliament stands before people who voted for Raila Odinga. Because if you look at the turnout, if you look at the voting pattern in Kakamega, Raila Odinga definitely is the main guy. So almost 80% of the women there voted for Raila Odinga. And then you start lecturing them. You start abusing. You start attacking Raila Odinga. Do you think they, they are going to allow you? They had to stop this guy. Number two, why they did this, I think Kenyans are now tired with the Kenya Kwanzaa failures. Because Kenya Kwanzaa made promises to them that, number one, when you get power, the first thing we are going to do was to reduce the cost of living. Unga itenda chini, kuna vitu zingine, tukiweka tumibilia hivi, will go down. But Kenyans are living in this country. They feel the pain every single day. The cost of living is now even higher than these guys found them. Then you get a platform, instead of telling them, what you want to do for them as a government, because Mr. Salam Dabad is now a government, your member of parliament who is accompanying you is just busy telling you how Raila Odinga this, Raila Odinga that, Raila Odinga that. So these guys had to stop that nonsense. As a matter of fact, moving forward, you will be seeing Kenya Kwanzaa and their leaders being shouted down. And of course you can tell that there's a problem in Kenya Kwanzaa because the other day I was reading that William Ruto actually reached out to Joseph Kenya to come and help. So the truth is, Kenya Kwanzaa made promises to Kenyans. And most of those promises are not going to be fulfilled because of A, B, C, D, including uh, some external factors. But they promised Kenyans. They told the Kenyans that the, the, the cost of living had nothing to do with the war in Ukraine. Today, the dollar is so high there, which means even if you are importing anything using the dollar as a government, then the cost will definitely go up. But Kenyans are not ready to listen to that. Number three, I also tend to think that there is now a tired narrative. You know, William Ruto succeeded in blaming Raila and blaming Uru for the cost of living. Now, if you did that for five good years, and luckily for you, you become the president and the deputy president and the prime minister and you're a member of parliament, part of that government. Now, how do you still expect Kenyans to clap for you? By telling them that, you know, Raila Odinga this, Raila Odinga this, Raila Odinga this. So Kenyans feel that it's now a tired narrative. You now have the opportunity to do what you told them. Just do it. That's what Kenya is telling them indirectly. Kenyans are telling Muslim Ravadi, Kenyans are telling Ijendi of this world that you now have the opportunity. Please do it. We are, we are tired with your narrative. In fact, in one of my videos on this channel, I was explaining to you guys that Red Odinga is going to have field day in his rallies. 
because there are people who are disappointed in this government, so they want to show solidarity. But for Ruto, he made promises and is now on power. What Kenyans need from him is nothing other than change. And change is normally felt. If William Ruto will reduce the cost of living, Kenyans will just feel that the cost of living has gone down. If, for example, he will increase salaries for staff, if he will create employment, people will feel it. So that, that is one of the, of the things that, that there's no tired narrative. And again, something which is coming out of this particular incident, in my view, if you ask me, is the fact that Azimio supporters are yet to recover. They are yet to recover. Otherwise, you could tell from uh, the passion, you could tell from the body language, you could tell from everything that these women were actually bitter. These women were not happy at all. Those are the realities. So the truth is, Kenyans who supported Reludinga are yet to move on. So they will not be entertaining anything similar to what Injendi was trying to do, blaming Reludinga, a man who is not the president, a man who was not sworn in, a man who does not have budget, a man who does not control anything. So moving forward, Muslim Davadi will have to figure out how he's going to deal with this. And lastly, which is also very important, <coughs> Is that from this you can easily conclude that Reludinga is still ahead in, Kakam in Kakamega County. Kakamega County is still Reludinga's stronghold. Otherwise, in this particular event where he didn't mobilize, where the prime cabinet secretary was, where Kenya Kwanzaa leadership were, there is no way these women would have just stopped Injendi from attacking Reludinga unless. They genuinely love him. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Again, thank you guys. May you have a good night. Let's meet tomorrow. Bye-bye.